Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Thank you for tuning in to my channel today. Before I get into my content today, I want to just take a moment to thank all of you that have subscribed to my channel. My goal going into 2021 was to reach a thousand subscribers this year. And I noticed the other day that I'm out over 900. And I'm hoping with the pace that I've been keeping right now that um, it looks like sometime in December, I'm gonna top that thousand mark. And I really appreciate that. Um, you don't know how much it means to me for each and every one of you to have chosen to subscribe to this channel, to click on the like button, and to uh, give me a reply now and then. I really appreciate that. I want to just take a moment to thank you. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I hope you'll take just a moment to do that and help me reach that goal. And I'm hoping that all of the content I put on here that you'll find will be very helpful. The other night, I got to go out and take my Celestron 8-inch telescope out. Now, if you're new, if you're new to my channel, uh, you need to know that that is a basically a new telescope for me. And uh, I got it out with the ZWO 533MC Pro camera and my Star Azonia. 0.40 focal reducer. And my goal was, was to get some imaging time on Messier 74, which is a spiral galaxy. And I'll tell you more about that in a couple moments. Now, due to some problems, and if you're in astrophotography, you know that there's always problems. I ended up only being able to collect two hours of data. I ended up having uh, some laptop problems, and then uh, by the time I got imaging after a little while, some dew build up on my corrector plate because I don't have a dew strap yet for the eight inch telescope. I'm hoping they'll correct that soon. Maybe that'll be a Christmas gift. But I ended up processing the data anyways. And I want to show it to you because I think it speaks to the overall quality of the C8 and how it works with that combination of camera and focal reducer. I really was surprised with how good the results came out. Now, I want, don't want to, I don't want to mess you up here. This was not the best image that I've ever taken in my life. And if I go back in and I add some more integration time, I'm sure it will be much better. But I was really amazed at how well just that two hours of data came out. So stick around. I want to show it to you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the galaxy, and then I'll show you the finished picture, and I'll let you be the judge. Stick around. Okay, you can see here I've got Stellarium opened and want to take just a moment to kind of help you orient yourself in the sky and see where M74 is located. You'll see here that I'm looking almost due east in Stellarium, and here is the constellation Pisces, which is kind of, a, I think, one of the hardest of all of the constellations to find. It's only made up of really just a handful of stars, just in a straight line. But if you find this star right here, which is a fairly familiar star to most astronomers, Hamel, you can kind of just follow it across, and you'll zoom in here, and right here is the Phantom Galaxy. M74. Now, Messier 74, as I said, also is also known as NGC 628, and it's often called the Phantom Galaxy because of its low surface uh, brightness. I'll talk about that in just a couple moments, but you can see here from this picture in Stellarium, it's a classic example of a grand design spiral galaxy, and astronomers estimate that it hosts a approximately a hundred billion stars. So when we're looking at this image, we're not looking at something in our own galaxy. We're looking at something that's actually uh, incredibly far away, uh, somewhere around 32 million light years away, and something that's very large. These um, spiral arms that come out of the galaxy are something like a thousand light years across. 
And uh, as we'll see here in a moment, you can see in this picture, but also in the picture that I've taken, that uh, there's a lot of blue and red and purple in this galaxy. All of that, of course, are indications of a star forming region, star forming, forming nebula. There's a lot of young, bright stars, or blue stars located inside of this galaxy. So there's a lot of new stars being produced in this galaxy. Now, this has the distinction of being one of the most distant of all of the Messier objects. And now, be careful what you, what you, uh, how you understand that. Of the, you know, little over 100 um, objects that are listed in Messier's catalog, this is one of the most distant. That's not the most distant object that you can ever image or ever see, but simply these are in the Messier catalog. This is one of the more distant. It's approximately 32 million light years away from Earth. And with an apparent magnitude of 10, M74 has the second lowest surface brightness of all of the Messier objects. In fact, this is such a low surface brightness that even on the darkest nights in most telescopes, if you're looking at this just optically, all you're going to see is a very faint smudge of fuzzy light, even in most, you know, amateur astronomers telescope so you really have to image it to bring it out and you have to have a pretty clear still night with a great transparency and with great seeing now the way i captured this let me just flip over here to astro pixel processor is i captured a total of 40 subs and these each of the subs was three minute long. And here I've got an example of that that you can see. And you'll see just how faint this galaxy is. It barely shows up on each of these subframes. But by stacking 40 of them together, two hours worth of integration time, you get a little bit better image. Now, frankly, to get a really, really good picture of this object, I really probably needed to do at least five, maybe six hours of total integration time. Unfortunately, I just ran out of time and had to stop at 40. And honestly, I'm fairly impressed with how well the ZWO 533 paired with the Celestron 8-inch telescope and the Star Azonia Night Owl worked. This actually came out pretty good. Let me show you just the stacked image real quick. Now, I stacked this with 40 darks um, and uh, 40 flats and 40 dark flats. And the uh, picture that came out, this is just the raw kind of stacked image is right here. Let me just open this up. And you'll see that overall... With no post-processing, things came out pretty decent. Give this just a second to load this picture up. There it is. Now you can see it needs some color balance. I need to get out some of the light pollution in here. And after doing just a little bit of work on it, um, this and cropping the image and doing a little bit of a color balance, this is what I got in Astro Pixel Processor. I took that over to Photoshop and take a look at this. This was the final picture. This is just two hours of imaging on this particular um, galaxy and overall it came out pretty good. Now eventually I'm going to go back in and do a little bit more imaging on it but you can see that that combination of equipment really worked out pretty well. And I think it worked out for two reasons. Number one, the Star Azonia Night Owl brings the focal length of my telescope down from an F10 down to an F4. And that makes it a much, much faster telescope, allowing me to capture more light in a much shorter period of time. Now, a lot of people have asked me, why did you go with the Night Owl instead of the Hyperstar? Star Azonia is famous for their Hyperstar system. And let me give you really two reasons why I chose to go with the Night Owl, which is basically a traditional um, focal reducer made for an SET rather than the very specialized Hyperstar system. And there's two reasons. Number one is cost. 
The Night Owl cost $299. The Hyperstar for the Celestron 8-inch is $999. I just couldn't afford that. And so I opted for uh, getting a little bit you know, slower system, but still much faster than what I had, but at a far less cost. And also the second reason is convenience. I can easily change out the night owl in the dark. So if I wanted to take the night owl off, go back to the native focal length of my telescope, it really takes me about five minutes to do that. With the Hyperstar, it's a whole different process. It's a whole different system, and you just simply cannot make that change very simply. And it also requires you to take off the secondary mirror and make some changes. And I just wasn't comfortable with that, so I went with with the Night Owl. But I'm impressed with it. It takes that um, F10 system, gets it down much faster, and helps you get a lot um, a lot better picture in a shorter amount of time. Also, there's a second factor. Not only is the Night Owl a really big help, but the Star the, Z, the ZWO 533 camera is proving to be an extremely sensitive camera with uh, with very low noise. Let me go back to this and just show you this real quick. Look on this. I, there's no noise reduction been done here. And and yet, with only two hours of integration time, there's really very little noise in the picture. And what noise is there is, eas- is easily going to be taken out with Topaz Denoise or, or um, uh, Camera Raw in Photoshop. And, and it's very manageable. This um, uh, camera uses the 9 megapixel Sony IMX533 back illuminated CMOS sensor, which is a little bit different. Essentially, a back illuminated sensor changes around the layout inside and moves the wiring around, if you will, the, the, the integrated electronics. It moves it around so that more light can be collected at the pixel level, which results in a much better performance and far less noise. And so, again, with just two hours of integration time, this thing came out pretty nice. I'm overall very impressed with it and enjoying this camera. Let me show you, again, let's just zoom in here. Let me go back to Photoshop. And look at that final picture. Look at some of the, you can see some of this uh, purple area in here, some of this red. All of that is um, nebulosity inside of the galaxy. There's a lot of, like I said, young blue star. So you get a lot of that blue tint in here. And overall, I'm pretty impressed. Now, again, I'm going to go back, probably put another five, six hours worth of imaging on this and hopefully even get a better picture. But overall, I can highly recommend the 8-inch Celestron Telescope SET with the Night Owl Focal Reducer and the ZWO 533 camera. This is proving out to be a killer combination, at least for my location and what I'm doing. All right. Thanks for tuning in today. If you enjoyed it, please punch the subscribe button and also the like. Share it with your friends. Help me spread the word. I look forward to seeing you next time here on The Digital Astronomer. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.